Hi, I'm Kimberly Malloy. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I call myself a motive therapist. Today's topic is vulnerability. So what is vulnerability? I describe it as when we share or we do something with somebody in spite of possibly opening ourselves up for ridicule, rejection, or even shame. How about the person who says, I love you first in a relationship? Or the one who says, I'm sorry first? How about the person who says, I have an issue with alcohol? Or the person who shares, you know what? I'm not doing so great in this new position I have at work. Or how about those that say, I'm writing a book, or I've written a book. Let's open yourselves up for vulnerability. How about I'm gonna adopt or foster a child? We begin to understand what vulnerability is. What does it feel like? Vulnerability is scary. It can also be really lonely. As we look at the subject, I think it's important to understand how and who formed our ideas of vulnerability so that we can see if they're true, somewhat true, or not true at all. So if you came from a very loving, supportive family, and you were probably encouraged to talk about your emotions, how do you feel about that? What is scaring you? Can you tell me more about that? If it was a family of addictions or abuse, then I can tell you that emotions was not a safe thing in your household. It was either, it either in your household was, it was okay to not be okay, or you needed to put on a mask so that you could survive. You might have heard different sayings, like, suck it up, what a sissy, boys don't cry, and you learned just to hide the emotions. So what does society say about vulnerability? Well, I think we're better, but I think we're a far cry from where we need to be. I still think society struggles if we share something that's vulnerable and we don't have a plan to either walk through it or we can't say that we have overcome it. So when we say a statement like, I'm struggling with parenting, but I'm reading a book, or I'm admitting a weakness or a struggle, I don't believe it's okay in society to say that. I think we often place judgment and shame on people instead of creating a safe environment and a supportive environment. Wanting to be vulnerable. <laughs> what are some of the messages that we hear? Don't show your cards. Don't let them see you cry. Don't let them smell fear. Then we enter into relationships. Now we come into the relationships with all the things that we learned growing up. And there are what I call contradictions of vulnerabilities. With what we learned growing up, it looks like, vulnerability looks like courage in you, but it's still weakness in me because I'm fighting those message from my family of origin. Or I think it's funny that it's the first thing in a relationship I'm going to look for in you, but it's the last thing that I'm going to show you. So in a relationship, I'm waiting to see if you will open up your heart, if you will share with me. But in order for me to share with you, you had to have made deposits of trust into my emotional bank account and checked off all the boxes before I share with you. To understand what something is, is sometimes easier to understand what it is not. So vulnerability itself is not weakness or it's not a strength. I think it all depends on the motive. The motive that's attached to the action. Is it clean or is it dirty? Dirty vulnerability is a false attempt to, for connection. And sometimes it's a false attempt to manipulate an outcome or gain approval. Clean vulnerability is a sign of someone who knows who they are and knows that although they aren't guaranteed an outcome, they choose courage over comfort for the greater good. They also know that they are still a child of God, no matter how the person they are being vulnerable with responds. 
vulnerability is not always the beautiful story on somebody's social media page about their struggle. I wonder if sometimes we aren't reframing our story, but the heart is still attempting to find value in other people's responses. I am not making a blanket statement. There are people out there who post authentic, vulnerable statements that really help other people. And I still believe that the other people who are doing it to gain value are hurting and they are doing the best that they can for right now. Vulnerability is, not, is also not about backing up a dump truck and telling everybody this, every story that we have ever done in our life. It's not about unloading on somebody that we just met. Vulnerability is for authentic connecting, connection, not approval, or not trying to force a quick connection. I admit I have done this a time or two in my life, and I think that we all have. But if we remember that trust is built in small increments and not monumental moments, someone has to earn the right to hear your story. Christ knows our story from the very moment he formed us in our mother's womb. He's the only one that has truly earned the right for us to trust our vulnerability with him. He is to me the best example of vulnerability, risking uncertainty, enduring physical and emotional pain, rejection, and hurt for us. The Bible gives us many examples of vulnerability. Moses, when he expressed to God how inadequate he felt. David in Psalms, when he told us about his struggles, his failures, and his hopes. In the story of 2 Kings 5, the servant girl who spoke to Naaman's wife about the prophet who could heal her husband's leprosy, and Naaman himself who went to his king and told him about what the servant girl had told him. I liken that to a general going to the president of the United States saying, hey, the gal who cleaned my house said that I've got uh, I've got the answer for world peace. It took a lot of vulnerability for Naaman to go to the king and share that this was what his servant girl had told him. Be brave, be clean, risk being vulnerable. The ability to become vulnerable will not come from likes on Facebook or Instagram or in the one-upping of stories with your friends but in the security of knowing who you are, and you are a child of God.